All right, we're here with another episode of Midland Minutes. I'm here with Steve Morrison at Edwards Training Center. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely, glad to be here. Steve is a 28-year veteran, so thank you for your service, sir. We appreciate that. You were saying uh, to the guys of the, in the class that it is uh, the difference between marksmanship and survival, basically. It's two different mindsets. Well, the difference between marksmanship and defensive shooting. Defensive shooting, okay. Uh, so when you think of marksmanship, you're on a square range and you've got plenty of time and you're getting the perfect stance and you take your time and you're, you're trying to hit the center of a target or a specific place over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And there, so there's a difference between that kind of accuracy and the accuracy that comes into play when you're defending yourself. Well, the way I like to say it is on a two way range, right? <laughs> um, when the target's shooting back. It's stressful yeah. and you don't get to pick the time, you don't get to pick the weather or the conditions. Mm -hmm. You just have to be able to react to it and, and be successful. So um, defensive accuracy is basically being able to stop threat um, and save your life or the life of someone else nearby that is an innocent party uh, as quickly and effectively as possible. And just like any skill, I assume that comes through repetition, through learning and knowing what to do in any situation. Right? Absolutely. There's a lot of people that um, they think they don't need this kind of training or, or whatever the case may be. But the, the saying is, you're, you're not going to rise to the occasion, but you're going to fall to the lowest level of training. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be true with this. You're not just going to, just because you carry a gun and your papa taught you how to shoot a gun on the range 20 years ago, yeah. um, doesn't mean you're going to be able to effectively employ that gun to save your life in a very high stress situation, especially in a dynamic situation out in public when there's a lot of people around. Sure. Because it's it's not just you and the person you're dealing with, but it's everyone else that's in that area as well. And shooting a deer out of a tree stand is different than defending yourself with somebody Absolutely. too. Two yeah. different, completely yeah. different skill sets there. The deer's not shooting back at you. Exactly. Hopefully not. <laughs> well, it'd be, it's not um, around here. It'd be entertaining if they were. <laughs> it'd be a lot more fair that way. Right. All right. So uh, other than concealed carry, what else do you guys do here? So the class that I taught today is, like I like to tell the students, it's kind of our preschool, elementary school of gunfighting. It teaches you how to safely operate a firearm, how to basic stuff out in the public to be aware of your surroundings and things like that. And, you know, with the USCCA material that we teach, we not only talk about defending yourself physically, but morally, legally, financially as well and, and emotionally. And the only way to really do that is to not get into an engagement in the first place. So. Um, avoidance is the main thing that we teach. The mm -hmm. gunfight that comes after that is That's secondary. That's a last resort, right? right. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do it, you need to be able to do it and do it well. Um, so we teach this class. The next class after this would be our handgun one, mm -hmm. which is it's a couple hours in the classroom uh, talking about different laws and some things that have to do specific with concealed carry. And then it's about six hours on the range. You'll shoot around 500 to 600 rounds. Oh, wow. And it's uh, constant, you know, we learn, we practice the basics of shooting and then drawing from concealment um, all the way to moving and shooting, shooting around barricades, different shooting positions on your back, on your side, uh, shooting around cover, uh, repairing malfunctions, doing magazine changes, uh, either forced or, you know, kind of planned out or opportuni you know, opportunistic uh, mm. magazine changes. And all of that so, happens on the range up on the hill here. That's absolutely. all the different levels of the targets. And then you mentioned the shoot house too Correct. that you have. Yeah. So. so you mentioned the shoot house. That would be another one of our classes. And we've tr traditionally referred to it as CQB, but that doesn't really fit because it's not close quarters combat. It's not close quarters battle. It's basically defending yourselves within the confines of a, a dwelling or a a building somewhere it could be out in public at the mall and there's an active shooter and you're trying to get away or you've made the decision to try to be that person to go and help mm. um, it could be like a home like, invasion it could be a home invasion yeah. it could be in your church mm. um, so anytime there's a structure involved and you have to move from one place to the other now 
Steve Morrison's rule of, of room clearing is if you don't have to, don't. <laughs> because there's a good chance you could get shot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better to, to barricade up, defend yourself, call the police, let them in, come in and do their job. Uh, but an example I give in that course is a lot of people have the parents on the, the bottom floor of a house and the kids are up in a bedroom in the top floor. And if somebody's in your house between you and your kids, you need to get to your children. Sure. And they need to know what to do until you get there if they know that there's somebody in the house. So that's a lot of the conversation we have in that in that class worth the time and and, and I mean, it's important that you get trained because you don't want everybody just running around with a firearm, even though West Virginia is a, a, a constitutional carry state. I mean, anybody can carry if they want to. Doesn't yeah. mean you should, right? Well, yeah, so that's, that's the way I see it. Um, constitutionally, everyone who hasn't given up their rights by committing a felony and being um, actually um, convicted of that crime mm -hmm. has the right to carry a firearm. There are people who um, maybe should not carry a firearm. Sure. I, know your own limitations, right? But you're right. Um, it's a it's a right that we have, but with all the rights that we have comes responsibility as well. And my personal opinion is whether it's us or somebody else, um, if you're going to carry a firearm, part of the responsibility is getting the training to be able to do so uh, effectively and safely. Sure. So we don't just do pistol, we do rifle, shotgun. Um, we do, our philosophy is if you're going to learn to make holes, that you need to learn to patch up holes. Um, you don't need to learn just to focus on defending yourself, but you also need to be able to render medical aid to yourself and to others in the case of a defensive gun use. So we teach uh, a tactical combat casualty care course, or stop the bleed, as well as um, open-handed techniques and less lethal defensive techniques as well. Okay. Um, so rifle, shotgun, and then one other class that we teach is shooting in and around the vehicle, because you know fighting in your home is the most likely chance, but um, carjackings and people trying to uh, rob you with a gas pump or whatever it may be, uh, fighting yeah. in and around the vehicle is an important skill. In sure. Well. All right. Uh, Dwight sells ammo and guns here too, right? And some self-defense type stuff inside looks like? He does, he is a, a, a certified dealer. He'll get any ammunition or guns that you need. If he doesn't have it, he'll he'll find it. Okay. If, if at all possible, he'll order it for you. And he prides himself on, you know, he'll give the best deal that he absolutely can. Um, and he does have some less lethal um, stuff in there as well as uh, medical equipment, um, magazines, all, all, all the stuff that you need for, for what we do here. And uh, yeah, Does he keep regular up. hours here or is it just uh, certain, just come so, in when he's here kind of thing? Yeah, it's pretty much, he's retired so he's here most of the time. Okay. He'll open up in the morning and uh, it, it's usually best if you want to come out during the week, at, not, during non-class hours to call before you come in yeah. just to make sure he's available. Okay. But uh, if, if he's not available then he will definitely make sure that um, he makes himself available for you earlier. We're not necessarily a public range where you can just have a membership or come in and shoot, but we do offer um, range time for anybody who wants it. As long as one of us are available, it's $15 an hour. And when I come in to open the range for someone, I also offer free instruction um, for the time that they're arranged. If there's something they want to work on, magazine changes or fundamentals or whatever it is, I'll 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 work with them on that for free. Maybe you want, would you help them familiarize themselves with their gun too? If they got, a new, got a new firearm? I have wanna... done that on multiple occasions. Okay. Yeah. And is that per hour, if it's a group, say you bring two or three buddies or is it per person or is it just? $15 per, per person per hour. Per person per hour. Okay. Which is uh, fairly reasonable, I think. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't think you can rent a range <laughs> without an instructor for that. And I then just been in a while, help but... Dwight out and purchase some ammo while you're here. Sure. It helps. So. All right, well, we're gonna go up and check out the range real quick and shoot a shoot a couple of rifles here. Let's go send some lead down range. Sounds good. We're up here on the hill at the Edwards Training Center. They've got several different setups up here. Um, the first one we were at for the training today was what, what's that? Just pistol range? Yeah, that's or our normal, uh, just flat pistol range. It's got gravel. It's got a loading table. Some steel steel and some paper targets that's where we do a lot of our like i said just regular pistol training uh, where we're sitting right now is what we uh, usually use for longer distance rifle we can also set this up for shotgun skeet things like that um, 
and then we have a, a range off here to our left or our right i'm sorry uh, as our live shoot house and on the other side of that is our newest range it's about 100 feet by 120 feet and then we can also get a little bit over 150 meters if we shoot a long ways on the range into the berm for the shoot house okay that's that's pretty good distance for about anybody what yeah. they're gonna bring up here isn't it all right well let's see uh let's see what this thing will do real quick here Oh, same, I guess you can tell me the same rules of those guys. If I do something stupid, tell me. Uh, I'll, I'll, unsafe, let me know. You'll know. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Call me down. All right. As long as you got your eyes and ears and it's just the two of us up here, there's not much you can do that's going to be a problem. Feel free to shoot any of the metal gongs that we have out there, the steel plates or the car, whatever you want to shoot. All righty. Well, we'll start with the short ones there, I guess. Let's see what happens. Ding. Isn't it just satisfying dot. to get that that ping? That I love it. Bing right at the end yep. of it. Right, my dot's too. It's pretty bright out here. I'm gonna turn my brightness up a little bit there. Oh, that's yeah, better. We are kind of facing into the sun. A little bit. Yeah, there's right. you got about eight or ten left in there. It looks like got you a big old giggle stick. Thirty-five rounds. <laughs> giggle stick. Oh, hang on. I don't know how many ears on. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well that was Edwards Training Center and they're located at 4040 Howes Mill Road. It's about uh, two and a half miles out Howes Mill, just past Canaan Land subdivision and uh, about a mile past Buell Ann Church, if y'all know where that is. So yep. uh, come out and see them. Absolutely, we'd Thanks love to have you. Thanks for your time today, man. It's fun.